As you might notice, I have decorated myself as if I were an Easter egg. Are you ready for an Easter special? Easter special, Easter smashal, what we're actually going to do is knit this pattern. Yep, this is a handwritten pattern. Now, how did I come in the possession of this well, clearly very old handwritten pattern? This is the pattern that was written down by the mother of one of my co-workers, but she has sadly passed away last year and my co-worker gave all of her crafting stuff to me. I have a video on my Patreon detailing everything that was in there. For, but for today, we are going to make this handwritten pattern. If this works out, I will write down the pattern digitally and translate it into English so that you can also make it. Now, this doesn't say much, now does it? But this might. It's a little Easter bunny. Um, my co-worker's mom chose to make it in very vibrant green. I don't know if we're going to do it, but I love her for this color choice. There even is a little bit of the green left. It's um, clearly not enough, but maybe we could add some details to the version I'm going to make to reminisce to this little Easter bunny. Now, as we're not going to use this carrot top green, what shall we be using? Well, the Looney Tunes has convinced us that bunnies like carrots, so if we're not making the top 10, at least let's make the carrot. This is some leftover Rowan Moredale from my Polina sweater, which if everything goes right was last week's video. Needles. To honor this vintage grandmom's pattern, let's use vintage grandmom's needles, but then my vintage grandmom. The paper says to use needles size three and a half for regular thickness yarn, otherwise use thicker needles. Thank you. That is very useful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for the three and a half. That should work. Or maybe three. I know what's the first thing I will find. Uh -huh. Three and a half. How do people find their needles easily and stuff like that? I, um, Get back where you belong. Is this technically pattern testing? Am I pattern testing for my co-worker's mom? Who has sadly already passed away. Or if you make the bunny from the pattern that I derive from this paper, are you a pattern tester? How does this work? This is slightly a funny direction to follow. She says to knit 20 rows, of which one is one needle right and one needle left. Yes, there is one right and one left needle, but um, what I think she means is knit pearl. Because in Dutch, that's rechts and averechts. But like, rechts is also just right. If there are like Dutch Flemish knitters in the audience that might be a little bit more experienced than I am, was left and right actually used in vintage Dutch patterns? So I have finished my So I have finished my first set of instructions which was the one left one right needle and if I compare it yeah that's pretty darn close I'm getting the same gauge as my colleague's mom was going to be an exact replica but then an orange So the next instruction says to knit 11 ribs always right. Um, I guess she means 22 rows of um, garter stitch. Does look like the body is entirely garter stitch. Yep. Ah, 
Oh, I'm so happy it's spring. Neurodivergent people are often described as orchids because we thrive under very specific circumstances while neurotypical persons thrive under almost every circumstance. But I should also say that I um, feel like an orchid because I need soft special care and put me in a sunny space. Thank you. I will start photosynthesizing now. I didn't think that if my brain was an ice cream flavor it would have been vanilla, did you? <laughs> Try pistachio or bananas. Are you curious about the provenance of this little Easter bunny pattern? Because I am. The way it is written down, however, doesn't really feel like it was copied from a professionally written pattern. I think it's something rather that a friend dictated her or something that she remembered, but not something that she copied from an extant pattern. What's your guess? What, what, is, what would be the provenance of this pattern? I mean, if I found it, you will know, like right now, but Hmm, the mystery. Now, while I couldn't find the provenance of this pattern, enjoy the cursed bunnies that I have encountered while searching. They are many. And they are cursed. <laughs> oh my god, they are cursed. You probably wouldn't say so. But we have, as of now, the legs, the body and the hat of a bunny. Yeah? Are you seeing it? <laughs> I know, it's a rectangle. But here comes the part where we turn a rectangle into something more distinctively bunny-like as we are going to make the ears. But it is specifically this part of the pattern that had me realize that this is not copied from something professional, but rather self-drafted or dictated to by a friend, because it has many logical mistakes. Like saying that you have to knit the entire row when just having to split in the middle. What they meant is turn and knit the other way around, but they wrote it the other way around. They say knit the entire needle and then turn around, but you're making one ear at one time. Yeah, are we? I don't know. This will make sense in a while when I'm doing it. I don't know. This part of the pattern I will have to work on the most when transcribing whatever she did over here. But it's fun, it's a challenge. I like preserving this pattern, especially because I couldn't find any that looks like it. I'm a historian, I have studied history. This feels like an important historic task to me. And well, historic, um, I didn't explain in the beginning why I think this is an old pattern. And that first off comes from the uh, paper. This is not standard A4 size. This is a quarto, which is not a paper that we standardly use anymore. And then, well, a second thing why I think I can almost determine a terminus postquem and antiquem is that there was an invitation together in the same bag with this pattern and the yarn for a party in uh, 1987. So I think this pattern is from around 1987. Well, bam, a bunny. Or, well, um, something. 
Let's block this body, then we can knit little paws. And then I have something to talk to you about. Maybe go sideways. Can we go sideways? Yeah. Yeah. So now that our skinned bunny is thoroughly pinned with very sharp needles, let's talk some less horrific stuff. You know how I just a couple of seconds ago said that I didn't find the pattern but only found some cursed bunnies? Well, that's not entirely true anymore. I was scrolling Reddit and came across one post in r slash craftsnark that talked about how a designer claimed that the spring 2024 Easter bunny design of Drops Design Garden Studio was stolen from her design from 2016. And long story short, if you have two eyes, you can see that it is not. But on the other hand, the 2024 Drops Design Garden Studio bunny looked remarkably a lot like this bunny, except it was entirely in garter stitch. So my first thought was maybe Drops Design just re-released an other pattern, but then went full garter stitch with it. I thought garter stitch is cool right now, let's just go full garter stitch. I mean, why not? But I searched their archive and couldn't find it. So then I Google reverse image searched the Drops Design pattern and lo and behold, we come across a twin of my very green bunny, yet in a more natural color. The twin of my bunny is being sold on marktplaats.nl, which is the Dutch version of tweedehands.be. And it was listed two days ago when I was researching. Um, so since it was a very recent listing, I thought if I email this seller, I'm going to get an answer because this seller wants to get this sold quickly. So I emailed the seller with the question, do you know this pattern and when it was published? Sadly though, she didn't know the pattern. She said that she thinks the pattern was published in the early 90s, which makes my date of 1987 a terminus postquem and not a terminus antiquem, just to throw some very smart sounding historic words over here. But that means because this bunny was originally created in the south of Flemish Limburg and the bunny on Marktplaats is in the north of the Netherlands. I do think it must come, so this weird writing on the paper must come from an official pattern, probably from a Dutch source. I'm thinking Ariadne or, you know, anything in those Dutch knitting or crafting magazines. Which brings me to the point that if uh, I make a pattern for this exact bunny, and this exact bunny is published in the 90s and there is still copyright on the bunny. So I shall not put it publicly on Ravelry, but put it uh, on Patreon. I am still debating whether I will do it in my paying tier or just on the free tier. Um, and I will include an extensive paragraph of me saying that I do not own this pattern, but wanted to preserve it for posterity. That's the equivalent of a mic drop, but then bunny drop. Here we are again with our weird bunny dissection plate. The bunny skin is dry. Let's make a bunny out of it and be a bona fide Dr. Frankenstein. Now, to be honest, the pattern leaves me in the dark for this. 
it says to first sew close the legs and the back, then stuff the legs in the bag, and then stuff the head and the ears. But we also need to stuff and make paws and everything. I mean, I totally understand this. Like, if you notice know how to make this, you need sparse notes on how to recreate something that you have made already again, because you remember, ah yes, I needed to do it that way. But I, I am not the original creator of this bit of paper, so it's sometimes a little bit more brain work. Anyway, let's first try to um, sew the main part of the bunny, then we'll get to the paws and see how we get there and sew on a face because that also has to happen and it's not on there, but um, enough babbling. It's not even good babbling. Now as for stuffing, I am using um, carding waste, that's what came off the small drum of my drum carder. Got quite a bit of it, should be soft. I think we can tie off the neck. I'm just making a stitch line as if I were to, um, to gather a gathering line. Now for the ears and the head, I think we're going the other way around. I'm going to first stitch the ears, leave a bit open and then push the fluff upwards. Push it, gotta push it real good. Dang it, <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> small, small, small ears. One is not like the other. <laughs> how, 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 how? <laughs> well, let's just continue, I guess.
Behold, my child. They have a cute face, great personality, but we're not going to talk about the weird skinny ear. My green bunny now has a orange sibling. And there is orange yarn. Sibling, yet not a twin, clearly. The green bunny is of a much tighter knit. Looser stitches on the orange one. And I don't know what happened with the ears. I think we had the same set of instructions, but it doesn't really seem like it. I might need to rethink this when I'm writing the pattern. I think there might have been a decrease too much on one of the ears. But for the rest, I think I managed pretty good with how little of, well, pattern instructions I had. It is an Easter bunny. I made a little I-cord loop over here to first off reminisce this loop, but also bring home our carrot comparison that we did in the beginning of the video. I don't really have a use for this long a loop on a bunny, so I just made a small one, um, just to be cute actually. But look at the face, the face is so cute, I'm so proud of it. I don't know how international of a television program it was, but it reminds me so much of the bunny from Musti. We call him Meneer Konijn. So yes, if I am done with rewriting this little slip of paper, you will find the pattern on my Patreon if you want to make this bunny as well. Maybe still in time for Easter. You still have a couple of days, you can do it. But anyway, we have resurrected an old pattern, which is a very Easter thing to do. I enjoy my little bunny child very much. It gives me a lot of dopamine and serotonin to hold it, to look at it. <sighs> my inner child is very happy with its new stuffy. Um, and anyway, if you like these kind of fiber shenanigans, then maybe you could like, comment or subscribe. But of course, that is all up to you. And I will see you in a next video. But if you like me seeing making little guys, here is a video of me making an orange frog. Bye!